Oh, hello there, child. How have you been doing this evening? Oh, what's that? Oh, you want a bedtime story? Well, I, I think I can help you out with that. Uh, I have the perfect one in mind. I think you'll like it a lot. Oh, but, um, you think you're mature enough, old enough for it? Uh, there can be some... Might be some upsetting content in it. I do want to do anything that'll give you nightmares. Do you think you're okay with it? Oh, well, that's good. And just so you know, I will be telling you the whole story, so... Don't, don't spread it around to your friends unless, uh... They've heard it first, you know? Let them, let them enjoy the surprise when they get a chance to hear it. And of course, this is this is my version of the story. You might hear some from other people that have different aspects to it, but uh, this is ours. Just for us. So uh, how about you get uh, wrap yourself nice and cozy there on the couch. And let me take you to a magical new world of monsters and demons and hope. I think you'll like it. Hello, one and all, and welcome to Dub Talk, the show where a group of friends go out in the woods, uh, chill with our demons, and maybe, just maybe, drink Baileys from a shoe. <laughs> I'm Megan, and tonight I'm joined by my good friend Amon. Hi. Uh, for a chill little time in the woods with such a wonderful, like, I guess, like, would you say it looks like, uh, colored pencil drawing aesthetic? Yeah, it's uh, colored pencils, watercolor, it's very, it's very painterly, not painterly per se, but it's very, uh, uh, what the fuck's his name? Raymond Brooks? It looks like the guy who did the snowman, if you've ever read that children's book. It's got that quality to it. Uh, and that is, we're going to be talking about the girl from the other side, Sulu Eun, which I'm going to apologize to every Irish person who watches this show. Um, we will be butchering Gaelic. Sorry. I, have I, you been, ha, have you been to Ireland before? Yes, once, when I was, um, I was pretty young, uh, so I don't remember it very well. Uh, it was green. It was very pretty. Yes, it was very green. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was kind of in the age range where right? I was a little too young to really appreciate, like, traveling to a... I wasn't that young, but, like, not young enough to, like, oh, I'm in this cool foreign country. Also, you know, I wasn't, like, old enough to do anything by myself, so it was very much like I followed my parents around on whatever they wanted to do. Yeah, I went, like, when I was 20, mm -hmm. so... Uh, I remember your giant spire in the middle of... in the middle of town, Dublin. Oh, dear. Uh, and I remember, uh, when we walked past the mailbox, they're like, yeah, you see those bullet holes? That's where the British shot, the British shot at us. Ah, uh, Irish history. We're, we're proud. <laughs> yeah, no. So, apologies to the entire country of Ireland tonight. Uh, well, at least the southern part of it. Um. <laughs> Getting political on Dub Talk. <laughs> I know, someone's gonna smack me in the back of the head for this, but apologies to Ireland uh, for any, th any butchering of Gaelic in your language. Uh, for tonight, we are, again, of course, talking about The Girl from the Other Side, uh, which was actually, the animation was kickstarted, if I'm correct. I think that's right. Um, I'm sure, I can't, I can't, I th yeah, I think it was to make the movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was kickstarted to make this OVA series, um, OVA slash movie, uh, it is cut up on Crunchyroll as three different episodes, so, uh, but just to give a quick summary, in the world split between the inside and the outside, those living in both realms are told never to cross the, uh, cross over to the other one lest they be cursed. A young girl named Shiva lives in a vacant village with a demonic guardian only known as Teacher. Uh, although these two are forbidden to touch, they seem to share a bond that trans transcends despite their appearances. But when Shiva leaves, teacher takes, uh, leaves teacher to te seek out her grandmother, the seeker of her mysterious living arrangement comes to light. Um, that's the A and N, uh, the A and N uh, summary. But Crunchyroll picked this up and dubbed it. So the Kickstarter version, if I'm correct. 
is only subtitled. Yes. And the dub is almost... The dub, I think, is the only way you can watch it on Crunchyroll. I don't know about only. I didn't check the settings, I'll be honest. Yeah, Crunchyroll's also been, like, fucking with their site right now, so, um... I want to make sure 100%. Hold on. Okay, no, you can you can watch both. Okay. I figured as much. You can yeah, you can watch both. It was just that they uh they merged the seasons together. Just so that you know there wasn't like 10 bajillion different fucking things um on their site, you know, per per normal for them. Yeah, it is English and Japanese on their site. Anyway, so, but here we are to talk about the English dub for this is Dub Talk Podcast, not uh, Gaelic Toss Podcast or Local Demons in Your Woods Podcast, though I think both of us would actually kind of do that, so. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think outside Boston lives in the woods? Mm. Just wild, wild Wahlbergs? Oh Christ, I hope not. <laughs> So we got an infection of wild bugs again. <laughs> oh wait, we know what lives in the in, in outside the city of Dublin. It's the sunfish. Stop calling the police. <laughs> it's fine. It's a sunfish. Um, <laughs> I still have that recording that you did for us pinned on our Discord because it's fucking hilarious. Oh, no. That and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, 1999 Toyota Corolla Craigslist ad. Love that, love that, love that. Best, maybe the best thing the internet ever gave us. That stupid ad. <laughs> love it. Beautiful. It's so beautiful. Uh, but also so beautiful is the directing and writing on this dub. Uh, this was done, I believe, internally at Crunchyroll, uh, slash old foundation, slash whatever the fuck they want to call themselves today. Um, and this was directed by Emily Fajardo and written by Tyler Walker. Uh, Emily Fajardo, you will know for her direction on series such as Ahren-san wa Harakanai, Sasuke and Miyano, and the cannon fodder section of Men Memories. And Tyler Walker did the writing for things like Dr. Stone, Spy Family, and Girls Frontline. Um... So the big thing, I think, to really talk about this dub is that they uh, used all Irish accents for everybody. Yep. And as my dumb American uh, lizard brain thinks, I actually think this was pretty good. It was definitely not your, your, their after me lucky charms shit. Mm hmm Which, God forbid, there is one Irish guy on, on the Crunchyroll Discord, and bless his heart. Um... <laughs> And I remember him giving that that rock gif of the eye eyebrow going up, and it's just like if anybody on this server is going to have a problem with this, it's this fucking guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I also apologized to him once because I accidentally insinuated that he was British. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh no! It was the worst political political faux pas of my career. I'm sorry, Rob. You you did nothing wrong. Yeah. Um. What was it? I mean, it's, yeah, it sounds good to me. Like not not that I. American. Don't know what he's talking about. Um, but yeah, at least it didn't sound too cartoonish. Mm -hmm. uh, which is very funny in regards to one of them, which we'll get to in the in the, ca in the cast uh, section. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, yeah, it's it it never sounded distracting. Um, for at least one of them, it was. I mean, it wasn't distracting. It was just like, oh, I recognize that actor, and I know that he's putting on an accent. Every two of them. Uh, everyone else, I'm either not familiar with them enough, or I don't know their uh, voice off the top of my head well enough to have it stand out. Um, but it sounded like you know competent. It sounded good. Uh, you know, I, I'm you know again, I'm, I, actual Irish people may have a different opinion, but at least uh, you know from my point of view, it sounded authentic enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and like yeah, I, I and I thought that was a nice touch. I think this is this is a the show wears its Gaelicness. Not super heavily, but like it is. There's it is. It feels very distinctly like I don't know, like that kind of sort of. It, 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 well, the thing that reminds me the most, uh, and this is only because I saw it with the last year, was a little bit of. Um, I saw that Green Knight movie that came out. Ah. Uh, and that and you know obviously that that's a lot of things bolted into it. But people have, I've seen people talk about how like of your various Arthurian type legends, that one is noticeably a little more. 
it's a little more spooky. I've definitely seen people associate like this one feels a little more uh, pagany in some regards, especially depending on how like the Green Knight is portrayed. Um, and it had that it, there, there was it was something kind of like spooky and fey and and that about it. It felt more folkloric. Uh, and I think I think the dove actually did a good job of capturing that flavor of it. It doesn't just you know it feels not not even like a fairy tale necessarily, but like a, a story even older than that, like something that gets passed down Ooh. from person to person. Yeah, for me, the aesthetic of the series actually of the movie actually gave me like uh, what if because I believe this was Wit produced this, but I don't know if they one hundred percent animated it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Studio Wit put this together. It was like if they asked somebody from Cartoon Saloon to come over and head the project to me. Uh -huh. um, for those of you who do not know who Cartoon Saloon is, uh, they actually did a really great uh, set of three movies called uh, the Irish Folklore Trilogy. And that is The Stranger, uh, The Secret of the Kells, Song of the Sea, and... Um, I forget the third one because it was the one that went on Apple and everybody got pissed they put it on Apple television. Um, what's the third one? Yeah. Yeah, Secret of the Cow. I know it's Secret of the Cow's uh, Song of the Sea and I forget. The Wolf Walkers. Yes. That's the last one. It's the Wolf Walkers. Um, this very much reminded me of, of that. That and the aesthetic. Mm. And I think Emily's direction on it also captured a lot of the vocal work that I, I remember on those movies. Unfortunately, it has been ages since I've seen Secret of the Kells, which is by and far, to me, the best of the three movies. If you've never seen The Secret of Kells, uh, this is me yelling at you to go watch it. It is up there with Prince of Egypt for me of a movie about religion that isn't a religious movie. Mm -hmm. Um... And it reminded me of that, and I think Emily really did capture kind of the spirit of what you were talking about, where it's like, this isn't a fairy tale, this is a folklore. Mm -hmm. And for me, her directing and her actor choice actually went really well to that, even though, uh, as opposed to you, outside of the voice of the teacher, I am super familiar with everybody else's voices. I've watched a lot of stuff that they're in. Um, a lot of them have given some of my favorite performances of anime that I like. So for me to hear them do the Irish accent, it was it was very much a, a change of pace. But also Emily threaded that line to at least my American perspective of the accent work being really well. And in turn, Tyler Walker's uh, writing worked really well on this. This dub never felt like it lived outside of the world that it was in. Mm -hmm. Like, it felt that this series, this little movie, movie OVA series, kind of had its aesthetic. And Tyler's job was to work with Emily to weave the words for her actor's form. And for a lot of stuff... A lot of, uh, especially folktale and fairy tale like story that very much do rely on a lot of visual cues to inform the audio clues. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the other things, too, is there's a lot of seg uh, segments of this movie that don't have dialogue. Um, so it kind of reminds me, like, we both, we were both on the episode Super Cub, where there were just be stretches of episodes that just didn't have talking. So mm -hmm. it made when the writing had to be impactful, very much more impactful. Um, so I think Tyler did a good job. And I also need to give a shout out to um, the ADR engineer, Zachary Davis, who did a really, really great job mixing this, this, this movie. Because when those, when those, uh, when those white like, moments of just, absolutely like there's no talking and just the audio has to take take control and be the script for the show it sounded really good mm. uh you have anything else that you'd like to say about the writing and directing hmm. i think like i think like you hit on it pretty well like it, it, it does the thing that i often associate with good dubs where it does not feel like it was something that was 
I you know you know, uh, you know in the in literal mechanics of a dev, obviously you have the movie and you're adding a new uh, vocal soundtrack to it. And I think a, a sign of a lot of good dubs is it doesn't feel like the um, English acting and writing was added after everything else. It feels like it is part of the cohesive whole in the way that the Japanese is. Um, and I think this does that very well. I like it. Um, and it, it never spoils the mood, which 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 I appreciate because I feel like this 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 movie has a very specific mood to it, and I feel like it's one that you could maybe not mess up easily, but it would be you know it, it would it would be a detriment to not capture that in the dub as well, and I think the dub does that very. I think it it captures that. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, it is. So let's move on to the very. Uh, this is a dub with a very small cast. Um, so I would guess, I guess another good way to describe it is that the show is very intimate, uh, for the subject matter and the dub, so I think it really does capture that. And the people who get to put that together are the actors for our characters. We have, um, we'll go from, uh, we kind of, like, small amount to, obviously, Teacher and, and Shiva, who are the main characters. Mm -hmm. There's the Hunter, who is an old man from the village who... Uh, in the third kind of OVA comes to the to teacher and Shiva and tells them that him and his village can go to the inside um, and some tragic stuff happens between him and teacher. Uh, soldier is in the first episode he is a once human soldier who is shown to be killing uh, humans who have been cursed uh, and slowly we see the curse take a hold of him. Outsider is a cursed one who tells teacher that he needs to go talk to mother. He kind of seems like an avatar or like her, um, her, the only way I can say is Patsy. <laughs> he's, he's, she, he's, he's her goon who goes out and does stuff for her because she can't go anywhere. Yeah. He's kind of the ominous, like, hello, you guys got any, uh, you want to see a dead body? <laughs> um, got any innocent souls? Unicorns. What's your favorite food? Children. Oh dear. Can't, I just slipped a fucking bluey joke in here. Um, and then, of course, we have our, our main pair, Shiva, who is the little girl, uh, the seemingly little human girl, who comes into the care of teacher, who we learn also bears the curse um, that will turn her into an outsider one day. And then there is teacher, the, the cursed demon goat head man, who takes care of Shiva, who is slowly kind of comes to realize that as much as she needs him, he needs her. And they have this kind of daughter, father-daughter relationship that happens. Uh, playing the hunter is Jerry Jewell, who you know as characters such as Victor Nikivarov in Yuri on Ice, uh, Akito Hayama in Kodacha in Ion and Show by Rock. The soldier is played by Ernesto Jason Labrette, who was John Watson in Empire of Corsa Corpses, Gaga in Petite Princess Yushi, and Lilium in Aka 13. Playing the outsider is Ian Sinclair, who has played characters such as Brooke in One Piece, Tatsumi in Shiki, in Skarkozy and Decadence. And Sarah Wiedenhaf plays Shiva. She is Ruby Karasawa in Love Live Sunshine, Power in Chainsaw Man, and Sana in Alice in Zeroku. And the teacher is played by Gary Furlong, in which teacher is his first named role, but he has done uh, vocal work in some other series, such as can he did some uh, like I guess follow work in things like Cannon Fodder, uh, The Dragon Goes House Hunting, and in uh, Plunder and Radiant. And he was also both in parts of Stink Bomb and Cannon Fodder. Yeah, I, I looked him up, and it looks like he has a lot of VO experience, but is mostly in things like commercials and audiobooks, rather than... Um, yeah, and, anime. Or even, even like, maybe, like, other just, like, fiction properties that aren't, you know, mm -hmm. stuff where he's narrating. Anyways. Oh, uh, yeah, no, where do you want to start with this? Uh, well, see, it, see, this is the funny thing. I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my bingo card for 2023, mm -hmm. and there are many, many things on here. But one thing I do not have on here is the return of Jerry Jewell's Irish accent. I was not expecting that. <laughs> At any point. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where was it the first time? Oh, he's in Yu Yu Hakusho. He plays, oh, yeah. he plays oh. this wind demon with his, like, uh, 
like the exact kind of like Lucky Charms Irish accent that we were talking oh, about earlier. Oh God! Oh no! Oh God! Oh my God! Oh my god. I I have never heard Jerry Jewell's Irish accent until today. It's it, oh. this is this is much I'm not even gonna say better, I feel like part of it is just this is a much more serious show than Yu Yu Haka show is at that point, and so it's more um like intentionally cared for and crafted. Meanwhile there it's like, oh we need a funny voice for this guy and we all you know, it's early Funimation, so we only have about fifteen voice actors. How do we distinguish how do you not sound like uh, somebody from another show you're already in? Funny accent. There we are. Um, Christopher Sabat. We've used him too many times. <laughs> he can't keep it up much longer. Yeah. Um, here, here. Having said that, here I think he, he's very good. I think he's he does not sound too cartoonish. Um, I always find this funny because I am Jerry Jewell is an actor I mostly associate with. Tend to a lot of his like kind of drier, more sardonic performances. Like when I think of him, I always think of like Kodocha or Psyche K. And so I always forget like funny accent Jerry Jewell, like in this or Yuri on Ice. Uh, so I was like, oh right, yes. <laughs> Jerry Jewell I isn't think... literally the angry blonde child from Kodocha. Right, right, right. Of course, he has range. <laughs> I think in real life he's uh, he's. I remember being at a panel with him. He was very dry in real life, <laughs> um, and it, he was great. But like, yeah, no, I I I think I unlocked some angry core memories when I remember made people remember that he played Victor because uh, I think a lot of people are still uh, the 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 jury's still out on that one. I look, um, like I I think it's delightful. Is it a good accent? I do Who too. Cares? I do not care. It's uh, it it makes me happy. Um, this is my serotonin boost. Exactly. Now I also really liked him here, and I really he was like a one scene wonder in this too. Well, he 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 does such a good job of just turning on that dime where he's knocking on the door and he's so jovial and nice, and then he runs into teacher again in the woods, and he's just so. Like, so vicious, but still clearly the same old guy who was, like, chatting up how we can all go to the inside now. Like, not five minutes earlier. I know that, I know, I, I know I shouldn't laugh for this because it seems actually genuinely heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. But when he, he stabs himself in the fire, I said it had, it had all the energy of, now all of China knows you're here. Yeah, I <laughs> I mean, that is from Mulan. I mean, that is that. I mean, that, that that's why he set the fire. Every, everyone's gonna know there's an outsider over here, and they're not gonna come here. Uh, it's not, it's not, a, it's not an incorrect comparison. Yeah, no. Once I, I really liked it, and then uh, to kind of segue into uh, Jason Lebrecht, who I immediately knew that was him. I was like, I, I know Jason Lebrecht's voice very well, but. Uh, I genuinely really enjoyed his kind of descent into monstrosity mm -hmm. and like these little glimpses that we get for him and like genuinely it's was he a monster before he even changed like he was very harsh on his command about like just like I don't give a fuck just murder him fuck them kids mm -hmm. and there's there's, there's his, his his transformation definitely has a has a sense of like uh, like, you know, it's not it's not being turned that made him monstrous. He was already like that. It's just now he, now the form is different. It's a weird, yeah, weird and tree really, monster. Yeah, I really like, like, kind of the gaspy rasp in his voice as he's just kind of wheezing out, like, I have to find them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh! Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Yeah. I also just, I also genuinely like the animation where uh, you, I think it's at the end of the first episode where he's calling out on one side and then his face turns and then you see the curse on the other. Uh huh. I just, chef's kiss. Yeah. Um, it's a good one. And then uh, let's talk about kind of the side character who, uh, unless you have more thoughts on Jason. Nah, he was he was he was appropriately terrifying. Like another good like like he's not in the movie he's not in the movie for very much but like he leaves a good strong impression while he's here. Yeah, and then there's Ian Sinclair who kind of I think gets to steal the show at some point because he gets to do the many voices of Ian Sinclair. Yes. <laughs> and it's always fun when I think a lot of people get to see Ian uh, 
go beyond, like, maybe his big shonen properties. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone knows he's Brooke. Like, everyone loves Brooke. Brooke obviously has range. Uh, I think, uh, I think it was Andrew and Lauren. Mm -hmm. I think Andrew, Lauren, and Josh were discussing, uh, the, the Brinks, Binks Broil stuff with Brooke in One Piece. Mm -hmm. About how genuinely talented uh, Ian Sinclair was with that. Um, and just, I love stuff when he gets to show off like this. Um, it genuinely kind of reminded me a little bit, and I think I put his uh, that role down here. And again, it was another episode we were on. It reminded me a little bit of Tatsumi from Shiki. Mm-hmm. Where he could go from being, like, one of the voices was kind of like that dumb voice to the very haunting, like, uh, we have no need of this soul. <laughs> Which is a hell of a lot. Yeah, right? That no, mother is speaking to you. Ask her yourself. And it's just like the sound of a fucking whale. <laughs> All those ambient, ambient, ambient creepiness. <laughs> just waft again. Like, well, group, I need you to just start making noises as if you are a humpback whale and go. Um... <laughs> But uh, I, I genuinely like it. I like how there's all... I like that you can all tell that Ian has a very distinct voice. Mm-hmm. Which, again, I've had to have this discussion with a lot of people. There's a difference between someone using the same voice and somebody having a distinct voice. Yes. Like, there there are just some people out there where their voice is just very distinct. J. Buckle Tatum. Mm-hmm. Bryce Pappenbrook. Like, it's not that they're doing the same vocal performance. That's just what they sound like. Yes, the the version the version that always comes to mind in this just because he uh, like it, uh, one guy who's good at tricking people into that is Steve Bloom. Because yeah, every, mm-hmm. every, you know, everyone's heard like the like St- what's basically just Steve Bloom's regular talking voice. It's the one he uses mm-hmm. for you know uh, Spike. Basically, it's like you know it's his adult man voice, and so it, it consequently because he's so easy to pick out, I think it's very easy to feel like oh well he's just a he's a one voice guy up until the day it's like wait what do you mean he's he's what do you mean he's um what do you mean he's fucking Guillemot? what no <laughs> you're lying <laughs> what and then it's oh, like Guillemot. and then it's like no oh, he has like a whole repertoire of like oddball voices he can pull out it's just that he tends to get cast for his adult male voice so you don't not that you don't hear them as often but you don't know it's him because it sounds so different yeah and i think that this is a role that let ian play a little bit with all of his voices but never to the extent that it was distracting in the show. Mm-hmm. But, but that's because this is what that character called for. There were obviously multiple branches off from him. He was supposed to be creepy and and I think almost in a sense childish with how much he's obsessed with Mother. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think Ian did a fantastic job there. And then we we move into like Shiva, mm-hmm. Shiva and Teacher, which um, I think Sarah Whedon have did a good job like making her sound like convincingly like a child. Yes, um, there are sometimes I think she made her sound a little bit older, but that's only because she was maintaining the accent and had to hit the emotionality of what she was saying. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna knock that off. I I think she did a fantastic job in capturing that sort of child that childishness but also the loneliness that this poor little girl feels Mm -hmm. and i actually want to give a compliment to the ending of episode two where it almost becomes hard to understand her between her crying the music and teacher trying to calm her down Mm. no it's it's hard no she she turns like she turns in a very strong she's also very cute like this mm-hmm. is not this is not like a this is not the focus of the movie, but like the little bits of just Shiva and Teacher just like doing stuff around the house are all very adorable. Uh, and I think I think Sarah just does a good job of capturing like, you know, she 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 definitely does like you know a lot of the the sort of more sad emotionally complicated parts of the character, but she also does the she like she does the little girl parts really well too. Um, you can tell like both how like overwhelmed she is by parts of her situation. Um, but also kind of like, I don't know, the sweet little bit where, like, Teacher's talking about, um, like, kind of his memories, and she's like, don't forget them. Hold on to what you have. Like, you don't, you don't, you don't have to just move on because you feel like you need to. 
Sometimes mm-hmm. it's good to keep that. It, 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 it was it was a nice little bit. Yeah, I also like when she makes him the flower crown and like her little noises oh, about that. It's the most precious goddamn thing in the world. It is, and he's just like, oh. Uh, oh. Oh. Well, thank you. <sighs> so cute. So goddamn cute. She's so cute. <laughs> See, <laughs> Japan, you don't need to make, like, creepy, horny baby things to ensure people would like to have more babies over there. <laughs> make more Shivas. Look at, this, look at this adorable child. Don't you want one? Look, it even cleans the house for you. <laughs> Which, that's the most unrealistic thing that happens in this whole show, is getting a child that small to fuck clean the house. <laughs> she, wants, she, wants, she wants to impress the nice man. That's all. The nice man with a goat head. I mean, who among us hasn't met a nice man with a goat head, really? Truly, that's what America needs. Exactly. Well, men and goat heads. Nice men and goat heads. goat man. He's in Virginia, I think. Uh, he's not Do very nice, though. I was gonna say, Hardy? <laughs> I was like, Hardy lives in Tennessee. This is, all right, we have two goat men in this country. Anyways. Yeah, I was going to say, we don't talk about the Virginia. Only the Virginia that has Mothman. That's the West one. West Virginia. <laughs> Actually, country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, Mothman Mama, take me home. <laughs> country roads. I'll be accepting my Emmy nom- I'll be accepting my, my Grammy nomination. Can we nominate this podcast just for the Mothman Mothman Country Roads, please? There we go. We this episode of Dub Talk now, introdu- now should now be inducted in the Library of Congress. <laughs> we'll be there with. Uh... I can't think of anything snappy that's in the Library of Congress, but all that good stuff. Yeah. Let's put us in next to Spielberg. He'll never fucking notice. He's got seven films in there. Nobody gives. He won't give a shit. <laughs> Hmm, what? Another one? Oh, well, okay. Yeah, whatever. What's this, podcast? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Good for them. Good for them. I feel like Steven Spielberg would be pretty cool with it. Well, I, though, if we were, if any of us were ever going to have a Hollywood director who liked our fucking podcast, it'd probably be Guillermo del Toro. It would 100% be fucking Guillermo del Toro. He appreciates that we're also a bunch of big nerds. Yes, him and his, him and his, him and his. Hopefully now, hopefully get a third Oscar next weekend. So. Here's hoping. That is that is as of. Oh no, wait, two weeks from now as of this recording. Yes. Um. Don't post then, in the comments below if he didn't win. <laughs> at least we learned. We, at least we're not. I would say at least we're not recording another episode on Oscar nights, but that's a fucking lie. Oh, because after after last year, we got that up. Ep- if you can figure out the episode that we recorded while the Oscars were happening last year, have fun. Because it kept fucking distracting us all night. <sighs> Wacky. Uh, I mean, it was last year's Oscars, so... That's true. Uh, back to Sarah. Um... I think the other thing that really works is her work in combination with, of course, Teacher's Actor, who, uh, I don't know Gary Furlong very well, but I'd let him act in more things. Uh, he sounds great here. I think he was my favorite performance in the whole dub. No, he's, he's, uh, like, obviously he's done some Walla, and clearly, like, this is not, it's not his first time at, like, the rodeo in general. He just, I don't know if he does a lot of, like, um, you know, fiction VO, but clearly he does a lot of <laughs> VO in general. He- Broad VO. But he's, like, he's he's very good at this. Like, he turns in a good, nice, strong performance. Yeah, I think the highlight of his performance is obviously uh, in the tail end of episode three, where he's standing in front of Mother and just begging her to remove the curse off of Shiva. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely, like, heart-wrenching of a man who's clearly... Just the, I, she makes me remember how to breathe, how to eat, how to feel, like, I don't want to lose the shape of, of me being clean in my humanity once and for all through the light of my life. And, and this realization that, that he has to come to in that moment that as much as she, he needs her, she needs him back. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think that realization of of him playing it as a father trying not to let his daughter die, but also as a stranger just trying to 
cling on to codependency and just his accent work in time with the the dramatic acting was phenomenal mm-hmm. good stuff you got anything else uh I, that that moment was really good i also like the bit right after the the uh, the hunter leaves where he's having like his little moment thinking about like his cursed state um that leads into him like he's thinking of killing the hunter to keep shiva safe but then like kind of stops in part because like shiva wouldn't want me to do that what am what am i doing why am I here? Uh, just I, he he does a good job of playing teacher as somebody who is kind of wrestling with his his state, but it never comes off as too like melodramatic or too angsty. It always, it always gets played at I think just kind of the right level for the kind of movie this is, which is like very emotional, but it's not necessarily. Um, like melodramatic big it's it's more it's a little more like kind of personal and close to the chest than that i think he i think he, he balances that out really well yeah this isn't like the phantom down under the stage yes. mourning that yeah not yelling what is this melody exactly uh it's it's a much more intimate it's intimate like a lot of the rest of this film ova it's slash ova is um i also that moment that you're talking about too I think the thing that really also makes that impressive is that there's no, like, for one, Teacher doesn't have any lip flops. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> God bless everybody under the sun. All of them are going to be like, fucking hooray, I don't have to match flaps. Um, but just, there's another thing, though, that, like, that particular part of his performance has to, I think, 100% be informed by the visual aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Because, like, yeah, you don't have flaps, but that doesn't mean you can't match what's on the screen visually. Mm -hmm. And that sequence, I remember being, like, 100% mesmerized by Gary's voice acting plus the animation. Mm -hmm. So, it's just that level of, of, wow, this guy is really good at this, and this is really heartbreaking, I am invested in this, and I 100% will now show this to what all of my other friends to watch. Mm. Yeah, talking about that actually reminded me of two two other just like smaller moments I liked. One of which is um, when they're like cleaning up the house, and he like just drops a bunch of papers. Mm-hmm. I just it's just funny because I think Gary does a good job of like he's still the spooky goat man, but he's also a clumsy dad, and he does a he does a good job of just threading that needle. And then actually when, when he does run into the hunter and he's just like, just panicking, like, don't touch me. Like, don't whatever, don't touch me. Like, don't do this to yourself. And he's, there's such genuine just panic and concern in his voice of like, I, no, don't, stay away from me. Like, don't do this. Like, do, mm-hmm. the, do the right option for you, my man. Um, and then how, you know, heartbreaking the fallout of that is. Uh, he, he has to, he has to cover a lot of emotional territory in only about ninety minutes, and yeah, and you know, again, like he's not he's not an amateur or anything, but like as far as first named roles go, like goddamn man, this is this is great. Mm-hmm. Just like one hundred percent, come back into this, my guy. Yep. No, please, <laughs> please, Emily. I know you're working on One Piece right now, but uh, if you hear this and you get to do not One Piece, please bring him back. Um. Uh, are I'm, you sure, gonna... I'm sure they can find a character in One Piece during the play too. There's too many people. Yeah, you'll you'll find you'll figure it out. Half half of the half of the Dallas scenes uh, explorations and finding new actors is just so they can have people for One Piece. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Hey guys! Wow! Congratulations on moving up. Uh, uh of moving up. Uh, so have you heard of this little independent anime called One Piece? <laughs> what? Kidding. It's like there's they, no 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 to made like a, a dozen new characters. I need I need fresh meat. Come on, come on, get here, here, come on. <laughs> what do you what, mean? No, no, I don't want to go in. Oh, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> gotta 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 pay your dues if you want to sing the blues. And by that I mean, if you want to keep getting work here, you gotta play character One Piece. What if they're a large reoccurring character? Uh, it's not my problem. <laughs> I don't write the manga. It, your all your complaints will be directed to this to this shredder. <laughs> 
we we tried just sending them to Oda, but he always wrote very concerned messages back, and it got very tiresome. He just he just leaves us on red. <laughs> oh. All right. So uh, if you're good, I'm ready to move into final thoughts. You good? Yeah, I think so. All right. So uh, overall, what are your final thoughts on this? What a delight. Uh, I wasn't expecting this to get dubbed. I kind of figured with the just between it being like a you know it was a kickstarted thing, and not that Girl from the Other Side is obscure, but like. I I I've not I've read like a little bit of the manga but not too much. Um, but uh, I was I I recall when it first started coming out, um, for kind of very obvious like super superficial reasons, people compared it a little bit to Ancient Magus Bride. Uh, which, yeah, which, I yeah, think that's aside, how. As, which aside from like <laughs> big big horn dude and girl, it doesn't really resemble all that much. Um, and I think consequently I've, I've, I haven't really heard people make that comparison all that much. Um, this very much struck me, it's like, there's a little bit of shared DNA, but this is definitely the more, like, artsy, watercolor, fairy tale kind of a story, uh, in comparison. And so, consequently, I wasn't sure if this was gonna get dubbed, just because this feels like the kind of thing that, like, this might be a little, a little niche. Especially because, <laughs> like, it's just a movie. Uh, especially because it was just a movie preceded by, like, 15-minute short that doesn't even have dialogue, like, it's just sound effects and music. Mm -hmm. uh, which incidentally I think I think that might you can still I want to say you can still find that on like Vimeo or something like that's floating around out there if you if you watch this movie and enjoy it I highly recommend checking out the short as well it is very much the same kind of thing you'll like that too um but I, like I was very happy it got a dub like I, I think this mm -hmm. is this is neat I think the dub is really well executed um I have no idea if they would make more of this. I don't. I don't know the plot of the manga well enough to know like how much of this has been adapted. If there would be more stuff, especially because I'm not entirely sure. Girl from the other side is that like plot driven. It feels like it's much more about like atmosphere and characters rather than like stuff happening. Um, but I'm really glad we got this, and I'm really glad it got this dub because this is like really strong, and I think it matches it emotionally and thematically really well. It's really well put together. It's like this is good stuff. I will, I will happily double dip on this if the dub comes out on Blu-ray. I'll put it that way. Say, well, I never did the Kickstarter, but I will buy this on Blu-ray. I'll double dip too, says the person who didn't kickstart this. <laughs> the sentiment is there, though. Right. No, um, I'll definitely agree. I really like this dub. I'm actually actively mad I can't use it for this year's dubbies. Um, but um, I, I is just, I fucking um, it's, it's a really great OVA. I, I genuinely fell in love with it. It's really charming. I think it hits, uh, that need for a fantasy series that isn't just, like, you know, uh, vaguely JRPG based. Oh, just a, just a video game. Yeah, we're, or, like, the world's mechanics work like a video game, and I say this as somebody who religiously plays Final Fantasy fourteen. um, like, I fucking love Final Fantasy fourteen. By the way, I, I hinted at this before before we started recording. Um I was talking to another friend of ours, Getter, who um who is basically my fourteen mentor. Um and I accidentally sent him the cast list for this episode. <laughs> I sent him what I was meaning to send Amon so that we can record. And uh when he saw that the little girl's name was Shiva, he goes, Oh man, I didn't know they let you sail from Final Fantasy fourteen be in this And I was like, You have no idea how many times I made that fucking joke to myself. Um which if you play fourteen you get the joke. Yeah. Um but uh and I'll explain the joke to you afterwards. But to me, I told him like, Yeah, even though uh, the Shiva in this would not be this character, uh that would she would be more of the character known as Ra uh, as Reen. Mm -hmm. To which now I realize that Shiva and, and Teach are, are just Thancord and Rain from Final Fantasy XIV. Ah. Um, but I, I this really scratched an itch for something I fucking needed. The dub was great. Um, I, I I really think that, especially of all things, I think this is kind of like the the feather in the hat of all things to Emily Fajardo's 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she, she as a director for at least at Crunchyroll, if you hadn't been paying attention to, uh, their stuff over at Sound Cadence, um, was a breakout year to the point that they are now working on One Piece. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So congrats to congrats, uh, you are now Oda's. Yeah. Um Enjoy that paycheck for as long as you want it. <laughs> right. Uh but that being said, I, I adored it. I adored the dub. Uh definitely want to see Gary in hear Gary in more uh stuff. Mm-hmm. So if you would like to are you good with your final thoughts? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So if you'd like to watch a uh, girl from the other side, you can do so on Crunchyroll. It is there both subbed and dubbed. Um, unfortunately, you cannot get the Kickstarter edition of this anymore. The Kickstarter is just completely done. Yes. Um, if you'd like to follow us, we are the Dub Talk Podcast. You can follow us on uh, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, uh, Tumblr. We actively we actively restored it thanks to a certain uh, uh, rat infestation on Twitter. Um, let's go with that. Uh, and if you'd like to follow and support us financially, we do have a Kofi, uh, as well as a Patreon. And our Patreons, of course, are the lovely, uh, Michelle Travis, Julia W., Nico Robin with, with Yowie Hands, and Victor Mayborda, as well as my parents at the $5 tier. And at our $10 tier, we have the lovely Anthony Brown, Carly Lestical, Crimson Echidna, Jacob Wilson, Jared Hawkins, Marissa Lenti, and Otaku Anthony. I also realized where you can listen to us, which is YouTube, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, and are we on Stitcher? Maybe? I don't know, actually. You can find out by Google, by checking. Yes. Um, uh, before we go, Amon, it is tradition, as you are on this episode, what is your dusty old song, O Amon of Wisdom? Well, I wanted to pick something Celtic. Uh, you know, given the state of this, uh, I there there is a there is a little vein of sort of uh, Celticy folk rock stuff uh, kind of stuck out started in the seventies, and that was when it was most popular, and it's continued on in various forms. Uh, I initially wanted to pick something by the band Horse Lips because that's a name, uh, <laughs> but I don't know anything by them. So instead, I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat just a little bit. Uh, a fun fact: Did you know there's an Irish rock band called Clanad? No. Yes, because Clanad means family, uh, and there's an Irish rock band called Clanad. They started in the seventies, uh, and I'm going to recommend a song from their. Uh, you know, you can listen, especially their early stuff. It's very like, you know, Celtic folk music with a with a thumping beat to it. I'm going to recommend a song where there's called. Uh, I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong because it's all this is most of these are in Gaelic, but I believe it's a Nilse Inala, which is pretty good. And they are also notable because uh, they had. Uh, you know, family organization, and for a, par- a chunk of their career in like kind of the late seventies and the early eighties, uh, they had uh, the younger sister of one of the members, whose name was um, I think Ethne, maybe I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce Gaelic names. I'm sorry. Joined as a singer, as a keyboardist, and she was there for a few years and left. And that is notable because that woman is Enya, <laughs> and she went on to be way more famous than any of her relatives. Also, apparently, she doesn't tour. She just fucking puts music out and just stays in her house. Bless. Which, goddamn woman, live in the mood. <laughs> live in the dream. Oh, what a champion. So yeah, go check that out. I had a, fe- I, like, I had a feeling that that was gonna live into Enya. But I didn't think it was. Like, I was like, is this going to be Enya? No, it can't be. <laughs> no. Surprise! I- Who can say where the road goes? Ireland, a little like Australia, it's not, it doesn't have a huge, huge population, so sometimes, you know, the music scenes are a little more interconnected than you might expect. It's what happens. Just, just... <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, and then, uh, if you'd like to follow, uh, where, do you, where are you at on the internet? I'm at, uh, I'm at Twitter at Amandul US. I'm also on Tumblr and co-host, which I don't post off as often because I don't have the brain capacity to be on more than one social media site these days. Um, so, you know, whatever. But, you know, check me out those places. Uh, I talk about movies and comic books and music, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, find, you can find about all sorts of weird esoteric shit that you will have no use for in most of your day-to-day life unless you have to go to a lot of cocktail parties and need interesting things to talk about and then I might be able to help you. Did you say, uh, you, you said, did you say where you can be found on the internet? No, not uh, yet. You can follow me at Queen Air and see where I ship posts on the regular and probably cry too much about Final Fantasy XIV. Um, so, uh, that being said, thank you for joining me on this. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, if you're, if, uh, I don't know how to end this other than um, 
I don't know, say, as of the time of this recording, St. Patrick's Day is like less than a month, so uh, if you're Irish, do your ancestors proud and drink yourself stupid and eat more corned beef than you can imagine. <sighs> so much corned beef. So much corned beef. Me. Do you think Boston's going to survive another Irish Day Parade this year? I would hope so. They've done it in the past. Yeah. Just make sure they uh, they get rid of the Wahlberg problem first. Yeah, here's hoping. All right, with that being said, good night, and we'll see you next time. Rock over Boston, rock on Chicago. And otaku on, my friends. It's good.